President Van Rompuy, we're very honored to be here. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to represent the young generation and ask you some questions about the complex European Union. In a very interesting report about your first year as President of the European Union, you described the European Union as, I quote, in the European Union, we are often between the one and the many, between the whole and the parts. This tension is part of our identity. The title of our panel is the European Union between integration and confrontation. Therefore, I want to ask you, how can you integrate the many, the many countries, the many cultures, the many companies, the many people, the many languages, by making them the whole, the European culture, the European Union, the European feeling? And how can you avoid the confrontation of the parts during this process? The European Union is a unique experiment. We are with 27 countries and 23 languages. Each country has its own history. Each country has its own specificities. And so we bring this together. We did it after the war in a big movement of reconciliation, changing history. And that makes the European Union, as I said, a unique experiment. And of course, we have to agree on each issue in good times, in bad times, with all the 27. And we have to invest in, yeah, in consensus. And in order to have a consensus, you need, of course, a good preparation of the decisions, consulting before each European Council and before each important meeting. But you need the political will the political will to act collectively, the political will to look for a solution for the Union as a whole, not only taking into account your own interest, but taking into account the general interest, the European interest. So it is not only a question of institutions and of working methods, it is a matter also of mindset. And I think that even in this crisis, we showed each time, in each meeting, that we really want European solutions. We take those decisions step by step in order to have everybody on board, but we are succeeding. We will manage also this crisis because there is a common European will. The decision to implement the European semester cycle of economic policy coordination has been reaffirmed at last finance minister's meeting. It is time to stop living over our means and carry out reforms. It is time to carry out a collective consequence in order to promote growth and improve competitiveness. Regarding the power of unions in member states and the dissatisfaction of many citizens of the European Union towards cuts in wages and pensions reforms, how do you think that these reforms may obtain approval. Does debt reduction will be collectively achieved? Mm -hmm. Each European country is facing now huge problems. Um, not only because there is a European Union pushing them, pressing them to reforms, but in order to keep their social model alive, in order to keep a inf sound economic infrastructure for our social model. We need reforms. We need reform in each of our countries. So it is not only due to Europe that uh, governments have to take tough and difficult decisions. It is because it is in their own interest. And of course, courageous and difficult decisions, uh, you have to defend them before your population, before your electorate, before the citizens and they don't agree at once. So I'm, well, I'm really surprised also that so many leaders of member states show political courage these times. And you, of course, there it can be social unrest. There can be discussion inside each country about the nature of some measures. And of course, a lot of measures are highly unpopular, but we have to do our duty in the interest of our countries. 
And at the European level, we are setting targets that countries have to meet. And as I said, it is in their own interest also. But at the European level, we help them to give that kind of indicators, to, give, to organize that kind of institutional pressure. And, and that's really uh, important to, to get those countries, to keep those countries on track. We are living through a period of crisis and now it is the time for courage. Uh, but at the end, if you can show to the population that all this results in more prosperity, more employment, uh, a better climate, then I don't say that they would be grateful, but there will be a positive result. Uh, but you have to give some time to governments to take the decisions and we have to give some time to the citizens to show them, to show them, to let them see that uh, all these tough measures, unpopular measures, give a positive outcome also for them. You said um, about this courage of the heads of the states, of the member states. When I think about chairing meetings with 20 heads, 27 heads of state who represent their country's interest, I think about managing complexity. Mm -hmm. What is your role in these meetings? How is it to be moderator in the middle of such powerful personalities? Yeah, of course, when we start uh, a European Council meeting, it is an adventure. I look around and I see 27 heads of state, heads of government, as you said, with strong personalities. Um, and how would, could we achieve, again, an agreement on very sensitive issues? Of course, the, the, this, this will not happen uh, at once or will not happen only uh, after a meeting and a, and a good discussion. We have to prepare all this very carefully. Listening to people, what are their concerns, what are their worries, what are the possible compromises? We, we test some compromises and some possible agreements before the meeting. And during the meeting, of course, then we have to, to, we, to listen again very carefully. A good decision is uh, due to a good preparation and listening is key in all this. Of course, then you have to be creative. You, use, you have to use some imagination to find the bridges between the different positions. My role is a consensus builder, a facilitator, but most of all, a consensus builder. But a consensus that is productive, not a consensus for the sake of a consensus, an agreement for the sake of an agreement, but a consensus that brings things further with a positive outcome, so you can change the direction of policy with the agreement of all, but as I said, with also effectiveness. And that's the difficult task we have. And that's the reason why they chose me a year ago. Huh? But I'm not the inventor of consensus in the European Union. Uh, this union is built on consensus. President Obama said it uh, also for the United States. This country, he said, is built on consensus. And it is as true for the European Union as it is for the United States. Because in the United States you have one country, we have 27 countries, but we managed to do it. Let us talk about consensus. From a statistical perspective, it is almost impossible that all meetings end up with a consensus. Um, how does this happen? How does, for example, in the Greek decision about the bailout, how did this happen? How did we get to a consensus? We are living in a crisis period, not dramatic, but in a crisis which some called a public debt crisis, a sovereign debt crisis, some call it a crisis within the Eurozone. The Euro itself is a strong and stable currency. But we have to find solutions. And solutions were 27. The problem is that we have to convince those who have to 
make efforts in their own countries to take to undertake that kind of efforts. And we have to convince other countries to show solidarity with those with weak economies and economies in trouble. So we are asking for some courage by those who have to give and others who have to face unpopular measures uh, and a population which don't like it at all. So each of those two groups of countries have to be convinced. And we, we can convince them in a step-by-step -step approach. You no, never have a global agreement at once. But step-by-step, -step, and the direction is more important than the speed. Having everybody on board is key also, is in, in, key in, that, in that kind of procedure. And you keep everybody on board when you have a clear direction and convincing them to move forward. But as I said, it is most of the time a step-by-step -step approach. At the end, if the result is good, people forget the way we, we went. Eh? Uh, and it's at the end we will be judged also by history on our results, on our outcomes, not on the methods we used. Mr. President, what should our audience from all over the world take from the European Union? I, I, I made a speech in Berlin a few, uh, a few months ago, and I can't say it better than quoting my own speech, if you don't mind. Huh? And I said, nothing was ever built on fear. The European founders, Jean Monnet, Konrad Adenauer, Paul-Henri Spaak, were full of ambition, not faint-hearted. They, they were not afraid. The citizens of East Germany thrust aside their fear and in so doing vanquished the terror of communism. Again, they were not afraid. Our Europe stands for an open, not for a closed society, but an open society with rules and values, with a project and with a positive identity. And ultimately, people respect leaders who bring together and to have a unifying effect. But without hope and vigor, nothing great can be achieved. Hope and vigor are essential. We must therefore be men and women of hope, Hope founded on achievements in the past, hope used for molding the present, hope as a spur to a better future. The European idea has been the most successful and the most generous project in the world since the end of World War II. It has united the whole continent and brought us peace and prosperity. And it has given 500 million men and women in our union today a foundation on which they can build a better Europe for tomorrow. Let us then use our experience and above all our lives of hope, not only within the European Union, but also as a credible partner in a globalized world. So not being afraid and still being hopeful is key for success. And the European Union was built on those values. Thank you for this amazing interview. Actually, you are the real manager of complexity. And this consensus, this idea of working together, is the art of collective consequence. Thank you for giving us this no fear, giving us the hope to work for a better European Union. Thank you so much for this interview, from my side.